Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I'm your host Latavia and we're back for part two of Perseverance. I mean, I guess that experience, like in terms of even deciding to become. Every, everybody that know me, know me to work at Walmart. Started working at Walmart my freshman year. Um, worked my way up. It got to the point where as I was doing so good at Walmart, I would ask my college professors, um, you know, what do you think career-wise? You were at Walmart. Pay good money. <laughs> Trying to, I went to school for this. Can I? <laughs> right. I, I go what I went to school for? <laughs> ah, man, you made good money. You made, you made more than me. I say, okay. <laughs> well, I graduated from undergrad. I went to grad school. Mm -hmm. Came time to graduate from grad school. My professor said, hey, my company is hiring. I can get you a job. It's a four thousand dollar signing bonus. I get half. What? What do you say for getting you the job? Oh, okay. I raise my hand because it, it, it's experience. Mm -hmm. No, you got a good job. No, don't leave Walmart. Walmart is great. The old Walmart is great. Mm. I worked for Walmart right at twenty years. Um. I previously, I was manager of the year for the entire company. That's any place you see a Walmart logo, I was manager of the year. They flew me to Arkansas. They rolled out a red carpet. Life was great. Mm -hmm. People wanted to hire me worldwide. No, I want to stay here in Columbus. Position came open. Crazy part about it, I didn't see the position open. So they say they were interviewing for it. I said, I didn't see the position. I didn't get the chance to interview. They closed the position and open it back up for my name to be in it. So what's everybody thinking? What's your first thought? Oh, you gonna get it. Exactly. <laughs> so I get my interview. Another manager, I'm gonna be honest, another black manager said, listen, you're not gonna get that position. They just put your name in it. They say they interview you because you won that position and they are gonna give it to somebody else. I said, man, whatever. <laughs> I didn't get a position and the reason was I didn't sell myself uh, what kind of reason is that that mm. I said okay so after that position I mean after that award you can see the different attitudes you know who you think he is and who it is but when I went to Arkansas I love to talk so what do you think I did when I went to Arkansas I networked right I met all the big dogs. <laughs> Matter of fact, the um the divisional over our area, I called him. I said, would you, would you like to be my mentor? He said, I would be honored to be your mentor. So now when it's time for visits, they mm -hmm. asking me, is he coming to town? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you asking me? <laughs> you should know. So it got to the point whereas they my it, it was different. After, mm -hmm. that was, after that award, it was different. Like, I knew the ends and I knew what was supposed to be done coming from the top. Because you know by the time you get to you, it's watered down. Right. So I was doing what supposed to be done in mm -hmm. the store. And they was getting mad at me. Who he think he is? You can't do this. You overstepping your bounds. So I went to one, um, at the time, the, I, my boss was separate from the store manager's boss. Okay. So I asked him, I said, man, what's going on? Am I wrong? He said, you're not wrong, <laughs> but you're not in a position to tell them what to do. Um, you're right at what you're doing, but it's wrong coming from you. So it got to the point, I was like, man, you know what? They, they playing with me. They playing with me. Um, my wife doing good on her job. Ain't no need to move. You know, I done spent all this time, you know, I was doing loss of in my last five years. So I was already working hand in hand with the police officers. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be a police officer. So I wanted to be a detective. Okay. Reason being, I wanted to be a detective because I don't know if you remember my cousin Sean got killed. He, everybody know what he did. He, he was a man. He'll knock you out, blah, blah, blah. But even with all the stuff he did, when he got killed, the police didn't really investigate his murder. Okay. It was almost like they was happy to get him off the street. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, even somebody like that needs a voice. Okay. Yes, you used to do wrong, you used to do this, you used to do that, but this time somebody violated you and they looked at your past and they really didn't care. That's how I took it. 
Right. So I want to be that voice for people that didn't have a voice. So as a police officer, I enjoyed it. Like I had a ball. I mean, it was like, even with all this going on, I, I still had to go out because this is the time to make a difference. But when stuff happens, you can't really talk to nobody because most people are against the police right now. But this is my thing. If you've never been out there mm-hmm. and dealt with some of the stuff these officers deal with, don't speak on it. Don't speak off what you're seeing on the video. Because sometimes you don't see everything. Okay, so. so... So don't go by that. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of cases where the police is dead wrong. And when the police is dead wrong, they're dead wrong. But you have videos where the police is right, but the climate is so bad right now to... Police can say, hey, you're disrespecting me. What do you mean he disrespecting you? He spoke to you. <laughs> but that's how bad the climate is right now. I spoke to a little girl, and her mom pulled her to the side and said, don't speak to him. That little girl's about two or three years old. Oh, wow. What are you telling your kids? So this is the time to make a difference. This is not the time to go out there and show off. But you got that. So that's how I look at it. But yeah, I, I, I made that switch. Went to the police department, went to the academy. I mean, I, look, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I used to tell people, you need more people like me on the street. Well, that I agree with. I definitely think there we need more people who are doing it and i'm not gonna say that all of the you know everyone in there or majority of them did it for the wrong reason but i feel like a lot are yes you're right Um, a lot have done it or they just want to have some authority they want to have a gun and they have horrible mindsets um in terms of becoming police officers but like you said, in this climate, um, it is, there's a lot more conversation. I think in the, in recent years, a lot, the whole conversation about defunding the police or restructuring the police, um, or just the way police policing is done in the country, I guess, just having, like you said, walked in those shoes and had that experience um, and now not being a part of the force what are your thoughts this is this is my thing you can always do a ride along you can go to the headquarters in your area wherever you're from and ask can you do a ride along look at it from the inside out see see what you think all right okay you get some water that's your chance to form your opinion okay you riding with the police, ask questions, talk to them. That's all you got to do. There are people just like you. If that, if that officer, if, if I went to you and I put my badge on you and you walked around, they would thought they would think you was the police. Talk to them. The only thing they want to do is come home just like everybody else. Now, granted, you got some out there that are scared. And the ones that are scared need to resign. The one that are scared of making mistakes that you can't come back from. It's not for everyone. Like you said, there was some, you got some that been bullied in school and couldn't wait to become the police. I personally think they need to raise the age limit. At 21, you're not ready. You haven't lived enough. I, I like that. I've never heard that, but I like that because that's like you said, you I mean, just the same, you go into the military with no life experience. Um, but I think that would be a great thing. I One of my personal like thoughts in terms of it is, I think there should be a longer training period in terms of learning the law and how to apply it because I had to go to school for three years and then go take a test to become licensed to practice law and have to do things. And not to say that police don't uh, get you know ongoing training, but it's the amount of training that's required in terms of learning the law. And I get that it's a smaller segment of it. I think that is too short. And I think that should be, you know, there should be more requirements, but I think adding and, you know, increasing the age limit would are the, the minimum age, I think that will go a long way as well. 
our precinct do an academy before the academy. Okay. We like, we do, I want to say it's, we do six weeks of training. Then we do hands-on training. Then we go to the academy. After the academy, you still do more training. Mm -hmm. And you got you to gotta get signed off before you put out there by yourself. But everybody don't do that. I think they was talking about it on the news one time. I think the, I think the beach was talking about more departments need to do that. So that's, we get more in depth. And I mean, a lot of people don't do that. Okay. But I'm gonna tell you like, to me, the Academy was a daycare. Cause I was, I was 38 at the Academy with, with these 21, 22 years old. They laughing at me cause I'm going to bed eight, nine o'clock. <laughs> They running down the hallway. I'm like, really, really, man. Like, y'all. Sh- so you on. lived the the show. I haven't. I've seen a few episodes with that show, rookie. the rookie. Like, you uh, lived that life. I got listen. When that show came <laughs> out, I got so man. So many people called me. I'm like, you on, talking about you on TV now. <laughs> you on, but I'm telling you, it is, it is an experience. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't know. We we meet people at their worst. Like we we meet people after the fact. We're not there before it happens. Mm-hmm. And then when people fell to realize, why did you come here? You called me. That part. I didn't know you was over here fighting. You <laughs> called me. Okay. So they talking about defunding the police and then doing all that. What are you gonna do if something happens? I, I guess I hear you, but I guess my question is, and I know it's not, this isn't you and you didn't create the system, um, but in thinking about uh, the young girl who was, was just recently killed, um, it's, I guess my question or concern is the response. I get you came because, and I, you know, we don't always know what was said to the, you know, to the 911 dispatcher when someone called the police. So it's like, okay, if they're told there is this, you know, imminent threat, you know, whatever, then of course they're responding, you're responding with, you're responding to that. But the default of, the default of I've got to use deadly force to stop someone um, of that being kind of the first instinct specifically, with people who look like us. Um, I guess that's the part that is, for me, is challenging of, is it just your, per, you know, the personal experience? Like you said, you're, you're so afraid of, of a person. That, that case, if the climate wasn't the way the climate is right now, the mm-hmm. temperature, mm-hmm. nobody would have looked at that, that case in that way. That, that situation is different. You saw the video, right? No, because I refuse to watch any more of these videos. <laughs> okay. The, to the people that saw the video, mm-hmm. the girl in the pink had a baby in her hand. Okay. So she was going to stab the girl with the baby in her hand. Knife in mid air. It in immediate uh it was a threat. Mm-hmm. He had to protect her. That's why he shot her. Okay. If he wouldn't have shot her, who knows what would have happened. But she was going to stab that girl. It's unfortunate that the girl got killed. It's very unfortunate. But you got one parent crying because their baby got killed. You got Mm -hmm. another parent crying happy because their baby didn't get killed. But at the same time, uh, if they would have, that's a situation. It was adults out there. They could have took care of that situation. I look at it like this. You know where we from. Everybody got somebody like that in their family. Mm -hmm. You got to handle it. People call the police too much these days. Now that I agree. One of the most. One of the main phone calls the officer gets is, I got an unruly child. You need to do something with him. What am I going to do with him? That's your child. An unruly child? Yeah, my child is disrespectful. 
My child won't go to school. My child won't listen to me. Those are the type of calls we get. So the climate just too bad right now, but I promise you, what happened to George was so unfortunate. That was ridiculous. That's why that man finna do prison time. That's why he he deserved. You should have seen how many police officers were up in an uproar. They were with the public. Like I say, when something is when the police officer is wrong, they are wrong. And we've had so many situations in South Carolina. Period. But like. You got to see it from the inside out. That's why I say some people you can't even have a conversation with. Them. So they start talking about it. I just I just let it go. Because no matter what we do right now, we're wrong. And I well, no, that them. I agree with you. Well, and I, and I mean, and as, as you should, I think we. I, I personally feel like you know, if and in any chance, any time possible, you should enjoy what you're doing. Because if you got to do it, you should enjoy it. Um, I know that that's not always the case, but. I do appreciate hearing your perspective because you lived the life. Um, and I know from when I worked uh, at, at at North Carolina Central, I was over conduct and I worked very closely with the police. And I know that experience opened my eyes to, you know, looking at it differently and just of, of getting to know the police um, getting to know them as people and then working with them in terms of, understanding what they were doing, where they were coming from, but also trying to find ways to bridge a gap between them and the students because of that, that misunderstanding. Um, and so I, I think it's important that we are able to have conversations and remember that at the end of the day, we're people, we're human. And this, this, is, this is what I need you all to do. Stop looking at the uniform. And what I mean by that, I've seen so many people I know homeboys you know I had one homeboy I spoke to him mm -hmm. at first I this is what it was we pull up in the apartment complex and I didn't know he, he did maintenance out there so he walked in the apartment complex and I recognized him so I stopped the car dude at the door I say I call his name I say tell him to come here so they were like the police out here I said man I don't know no police he came to the door he looked at my uniform first Never looked at my face uh -huh. till he heard till he caught my voice. Oh, what up, man? I didn't know you was the police. Seen somebody else. Spoke to them. They listen at they listen at your voice. They don't look at you. People, you all look at the uniform. Or get the uniform. I, I hear you and I want to agree. I, I agree to an extent, but in the same way, I feel like I need people, I need police, not, you know, obviously not you, but those who I feel like look at skin color as a uniform and don't see that it's a person. But I agree with you. We do have to look past the uniform because everyone in a uniform is not brainwashed and you don't all think it's not a monolith. I, I completely understand and agree with you there. And I think for me, and I think a lot of it's kind of in that reverse of this, I don't take this on and off, you know, at night. And you don't, you know, you, you can- And honestly, if, if when I'm not in uniform, you're right. And you got them out there that do that. You, you got them out there that do that. I'm not gonna sit here and take up for them because they're out there. Mm -hmm. They're sheep and wolf. I mean, they're wolves in sheep clothing. They're yeah. out there. I, and I, can't take up for them. I refuse to take up for them. But that's why we need more of us to go out there and change it. Now that I agree. And I, I mean, I, I'm i not saying I think the police need to be defunded. I do think there needs to be reforms. I think what you said that your precinct um, uh, did or does in terms of training, I think that's a step in the right direction. And I know that across the country, there's different... One of the... the I would say the... The joys and challenges of our country is every, you know, we have federal laws, but then each state has their own and then each locality has their own. And so there are still a lot of things that are left up. They're left to the discretion of respective municipalities. And that's where we get all of these different 
there is no standard and the blanket immunity and all these different things. Um, That's crazy. It's yeah. So it's like I think I think it's a combination of we need more of us uh, or more minorities uh, on the police force, but there also needs to be reforms in terms of how policing is done and what it looks like. There needs to be more community policing, or you know, like that whole concept. If it takes a village to raise a child, like if if your child is unruly or disrespectful, you got to look at yourself. I feel like you, you, it has, it starts at home and that's even the same in education, which I'm sure your wife is all too familiar with. Uh, a lot of things are now, people are trying to push it off on someone else to be responsible for when there's things that we have to take responsibility for and hold ourselves accountable. And by no means am I excusing the, the things. Um, yeah, but it's, it's so many things. <laughs> Some the thing things. is, if you know you got an officer in your area that acts like that, mm -hmm. take notes. Like you say, community, take notes. Do document what he do. Everybody got a camera now. Well, don't, we know. Yeah. Don't get unruly with him. Because in that, in, that, in, that, in that specific moment, you're going to lose. No, yeah, that, 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 that I so, agree. So when he get out of character, make note. You know, have your documentation. You don't have to act like that. But no, I got to be big and bad and I'm real and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Okay, wait, wait, wait a sense. I just seen a video um, of a lady laying in the street. And another lady come up there because the police was around about to get out the street. Another lady come up. I'm a social worker. Y'all not going to touch this black woman because she's speaking her mind. Blah, blah, blah. Cussing out the police doing all that. She said they protesting. What was all that about? I'm going to hold up traffic. But guess what? My mommy in traffic and she need to get some way. And she's trying to figure out what's going on. But her son holding up traffic coming. He protesting. What am, what am I protesting? No, I agree. There's definitely... You know, as my dad, there's a time and a place for everything. Um, there you go. And there is, and there are ways. And I think there are there are ways to do things. And there are people who mean well, but they their don't approach know. to it is know. you know they they're trying know they're to doing. do something. Yeah, and they don't know. And they don't and know. They saw trying, you do something. Yeah, and trying to help sometimes make the situation oftentimes make the situation worse. And, and one of the things that I, I, I did a program or kind of a series and I often say is you gotta survive the interaction. You gotta survive the day or survive the night. So, and like you said, take note, do as much as you can to get as much information as you can about the officer, even if it's not an officer, if it's any other kind of altercation, getting through it. And then so that you can then follow up because if you're not alive, you can't I always say, I always say, how did you get in this situation? What did you do to get in this situation? That's what I say. Why, why are we even dealing with each other? Because well, like I say, officers are called. Now you got some officers that go out there and stir up stuff. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm you happy got, you added that part. Those are the ones you got to take notes on yeah. and get out of here. Those ones you got to look at. It was an officer in Florence and he was doing people dirty. Mm -hmm. It finally got caught up with him based on the front page of the news because it caught up with him. You know, everybody, ah, this how I take notes. Because you got somebody that don't want that to happen. And you, you practice law. You know, you got some lawyers be rubbing their hands together. I'm going to get them. Let me get one. You know, let me get the whale. Let me get the big fish. Yes. I mean, and that's and that's what you do. But for the most part, I mean, right now we're we're just all bad. And we got to eat that. We we got to eat that. So and at the same time, we got to change that. That's all that is. And when I get when the doctor released me and allowed me to go back to work, I'm going back to be a police officer. I might not be in the streets, but I'll be behind the scenes. Okay. I, I was going to ask that, like, where are you planning to go back? 
Oh yeah, I'm not done yet. You know we work. Yeah. Well, like I said, I I take there is I take comfort and there's some peace in knowing that you are you are one of the people in the uniform. Um, but I agree, there is much work to be done. Oh, there's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> and you know, we got years upon we got centuries worth of uh, of things to unravel and to change and to work through. And there is no, it's not an overnight thing. It's not a one year thing. It's gonna take some time. But like I said, I take comfort in knowing that you are a part of the solution. Trying to be, excuse me one second. Makai. Go ahead, he ain't paying me no attention. <laughs> he upstairs. But no, like I said, I, I appreciate that and as you are continuing to to you know rebuild your strength. Excuse me. What you want from Zaxis? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what is do that? they have? Oh. <laughs> they got chicken tenders. <laughs> Fries. <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> You're like give me them. Chicken wings. No, I don't have no shrimp. <laughs> you come get them. <laughs> I'm sitting with y'all. Yeah, y'all owe me because we came to y'all, so y'all owe me. Okay. I gotta send them to you and Jazz. That. But no, but I mean, it's gonna take a while. But you, you honestly got people trying to make a difference because because you you got we're tired of it because it's dangerous now. And we right now about to pass the open carry law. That's what they're trying to pass here. That's going to be dangerous. It's, I mean, like, every every day you leave this, grandma got upset when I became a police officer. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> she didn't want me to do it. It's it's so many things that, like you said, even now, just whether you're a police officer or not, or just living, it's it could be anything. And there's no places that are off limits anymore. No nothing is sacred or off limits anymore and so part of the reason that i appreciated the pandemic i get to stay home <laughs> and i i can limit when i go out there is a certain comfort i have in knowing that i'm at home and all the people that i love are also at home um yeah. and it, obviously that's not a guarantee but there is and it's crazy that that's the way you know that's even a thought or that's something that you consider uh but and our family's been fortunate with the COVID. Yes, yes. We haven't, we haven't lost no one to COVID, knock on wood, but we've been fortunate. And, and you got to look at it. We got a grandma that's going to be 92 in, 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 two, in two months. And she called me. Matter of fact, I just talked to her yesterday. Have you FaceTimed her yet? Every time I do, she's not available. <laughs> but I have tried. I say, you losing. You ain't FaceTime grandma yet. You losing. Oh, I've done it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try later today. Like I said, because my face got fat. I was, the, matter of fact, the last time I was up there, she called, I don't know if she called you or AJ called you, but yeah, I remember she. Oh, you was over there that day? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that day. But no, but like, it's just, it's a lot going on now. It's a lot going on. And my thing is, me being in my situation, it's giving me a time to sit down and think and, and, and value what's going on. Like, I haven't worked in over a year. And we are all right. We're blessed. Thank God for that. So, and I I, I, I look at stuff differently now. Like, people get upset for, for, little, for no reason. I made a post one day. I woke up and I put my feet on the floor. That's something you don't think about. Like, right now, you, you finna get up and walk off. You don't think about how easy that was. But mm -hmm. what about the ones that can't do that? People don't, people don't think about that. But you mm -hmm. fussing about this and you fussing about that. Nah, that ain't that ain't nothing to fuss about. You better count your blessings. I, like I say, chicken pox, measles, I haven't had any of that. The flu, haven't had that. So, yes, sir. No, mommy not getting no shrimp. Popeyes. <laughs> All right, we'll see.
But the thing, what I said, it may forget what I was saying. This is what you're talking about not taking things for granted. But yeah, not I mean, not taking things for granted because like I was walking and crawling the next day. And no matter of fact, excuse me, I was scooping. I couldn't even crawl. Mm-hmm. I had to learn how to crawl. If you go back and look at my Facebook page, you will see all the way from when I'm in rehab, learning how to sit up. You're just throwing a handkerchief up right now. How easy is that for you? Mm-hmm. You know how that was? To try to sit up, hold your balance, and juggle a handkerchief? Mm. I had to learn all of that over. One thing, and, and do me this favor. For someone in a wheelchair, don't go up to them and let me, say, let me push you. Let them ask you to push them. All right. That's like you walking and I come push you. What are you going to say? Stop pushing. Got you. But that's your way of getting around. If you got somebody that always want to be pushed, they don't want to get out of the chair. I had two people offer me a motorized wheelchair. Give it to somebody that need it. I told one person, if you want, give it to me. And on behalf of my foundation, I give it to someone else. So I actually got someone right now that's holding an electric wheelchair for me. He said, when I, if somebody want it, we'll give it to them. Okay. So that's what that is. But it's, it's different. So you got you to gotta, you gotta count your blessings around. People don't realize that. Because literally, like a light switch, your world can be turned upside down. I'm, I'm that, living for that you. Is so true. Like tomorrow. When I get back on my feet, y'all gonna be like, that, that man ain't stopped yet. I I will not be surprised <laughs> that you are on the go. Like I said, I'm, the, I'm cel- the celebration we're gonna have. Just wait. Let me, let me know when. I'm gonna do everything gonna, in my gonna, power to be. We're gonna there. set it out. <laughs> and it is gonna be chicken there. Oh, I know. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> but like I said, I I am so happy that we got to do this. Um, and I'm hoping we can see each other in person sooner, you know, that it won't be another two years um, before that happens as things are starting to semi-open oh, no. back up. Um, you got your vaccine? I'm on my way. <laughs> What about you? I got my, I get, I got my card. You got your card. I got my card. That is definitely the new thing. I got my card. Like I'm, I'm you not. Got your, you got your driver's license. Yeah, you got your card. I ain't got my car. <laughs> right. I got my car. <laughs> but that okay. probably is going to be like a requirement within the next year. Of let me Quiet see your down. card. I got but, my card. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Anytime. For, for for sharing your your you know sharing some of your story and being so open not just with me but with everyone and, and I, I I know that you will continue to do that but please do um, continuing to share and for those listening like I said this is a snippet of, of, of everything so definitely make sure that you go to his Facebook go to Corey Mitchell's Facebook page the Corey Mitchell multiple sclerosis sclerosis Foundation. Um, get your shirt, get your mask, uh, and stay tuned for all of the great things that are coming. Uh, I know that I will. And like I said, I thank you so much for this. And it's been refreshing. Uh, yeah, I don't know yet. Just, but even just the, all the different things. And like I said, I've always looked up to you. And so to see that you are still, you're essentially, you're just not letting anything stop you. And that speaks mm-hmm. volumes in so many ways. Too many people watching. You got to you got to show them this ain't the end. It's just a situation, temporary situation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk out of this. Yes, and literally, literally, yes. And like I said, so that I can't say it better. That is, it's a situation, and even when it does not look or feel like it it is still things are still working out for our good um we just got to keep 
pressing, keep walking through. So for those listening, remember it is a journey, it's a process and enjoy, so enjoy it. Uh, thank you for listening. Until next time. Hi. <laughs>